about APF calculators. You all know how I've been talking about some minor brands. APF is a relatively minor brand. But instead of doing that, I thought we'd spend the next hour and a half going over the TI-88 schematic. <laughs> that actually is the schematic, but no, no, we're not going to do that. APF Electronics, there's two of the past this that way, Richard. It goes to everybody else, not just to you. Just the back. It needs, just needs to go back. What, what solution, sir? I, I don't know. If you shake it hard enough, everything will turn loose. Well, the extra. It's probably, no, no I don't, that, that's not part of my presentation. <laughs> We, um, so APF was a publicly traded company in the United States that was dedicated to consumer electronics. The name, strangely enough, I didn't know this for years, comes from the initials of the founders, Al and Phil Friedman, APF. There are two APF models that are being passed around. Try to at least look at them. They're representative of the APF models that were out there. The company was founded to import stereos and eight tracks from uh, Japan. They moved into calculators. They had locations in Queens, New York, where they were headquartered, and in Hong Kong, where they owned a factory. They employed about 300 people. They made lots more than calculators. They started off big time, really, into some video games. They had the TV Fun and the M1000 and the Imagination Machine. This is courtesy, by the way, of a good website and a great technology writer, Benj Edwards. Ben Edwards, you should look for him. But here is the APF TV fund. I want to thank Richard for these pictures from his living room. <laughs> but the TV fund, what did it show on the TV? Things like this. Pong and every sort of game you could make out of the same screen. So TV fund, right? I'm, we all remember those. The M1000 was a bit more advanced. It had the... Uh, little controllers that also had a keypad on them. Um, the M1000 looked like that and was advertised this way with some games. You can see the games at the bottom of the screen. I've got close-ups of some of the games, Hangman, uh, Baseball, and some others. The M1000 fit into a larger computer console, similar to the Coleco Atom, how it would take the Coleco Vision and pop in there. And it formed the imagination machine. And I actually remember this advertisement. The rainbow-colored imagination machine at the top. The only computer with color, sound, user programmability, and expandability for $5.99. What year? 1978, I think. Uh, it came with a whopping 9K of RAM. What comes with 9K of RAM? Yeah, you need a few extra K I guess 9K, 14K basic in ROM, uh, and a, f a fine resolution picture. Okay, yeah. Here's what some of the games looked like. That was baseball. Space Invaders. Yeah. Right? Bowling. I have never seen one of these machines, but I remember the ad. But that was one part of their business. Eight tracks, symphon symphonic, stereos, uh, and all this kind of stuff. But I want to talk about their calculators, so let's jump into that. As far as I can tell, this was APF's first uh, adding machine calculator. It had the lovely uh, orange displays, the Mark I. For some reason, Mark figures into the names of most of them. I don't know who Mark was, but Mark I here. Then they have this kind of thing. They also made an adding machine desktop. The Mark 121, a Mark 5, which had that lovely uh, kind of flip up cover over the display. You would turn it on or do it, and it would flip up to let you see and then slide back over and protect it. Uh, a lot of machines did that kind of thing. The Mark 3 was a little smaller, had the same features, but those are still all adding machines. I don't collect adding machines. If it doesn't have trig, it is worthless to me or present values. It's important to have that. So let's talk about scientifics. That's all I really care about here anyway. The Mark 22. Again, who's Mark? Uh, it had trigonometry, uh, natural logs, one memory, a constant square root, reciprocal, and pi. Here's the keyboard. Okay, here's the keyboard to look at. The Mark 22. What's missing? Look at the keys and functions. What's missing? Equals. Equals is equals is on there. Equal, it's also a constant. That's what the slash K means. Equals, equals on there. X squared. X squared. 
In fact, more than just x squared, any ability to do a power other than e to the x. There's no x squared or powers. We don't need no stinking powers. Hard, hard to imagine leaving that function out. Granted, I think there's some manipulation you can do with e to the x, but I've forgotten it. Also, why is the shift key red? There's nothing red on the screen, on the keyboard, nothing. Huh? Oh well. The Mark 51 had the exact same function set as the Mark 20 in a slightly different industrial design. It did, however, have a lowercase degrees radians mode switch and a slightly smaller typeface and had the what shift key? Red shift key. Remember, come on, remember the finance presentation a year or two ago? It was the same function set. We're going to have red shift key a lot. Had the same red uh, function key, the Mark 51. Then you have the Mark 50. That's what's being passed around, I think. Where's the Mark 50 now? Look back there. The Mark 50. So a red shift key for black shifted functions. I don't understand that. But if you notice real carefully, it is a red dot version. It must be very valuable. It's a red dot version there on the on-off switch. Strictly for distinction, I'm sure. To make it must be. Yeah. Want, want to drive collectors mad, right? The Mark 50. The numbers do not have any sequential meaning for more powerful Obviously, or less yeah. powerful, right? Uh, what number do you like today? I don't know, 50. Here's the Mark 20. It added, finally, the previous ones had the same function set, different industrial design. Why? I don't know. They ran out of the plastic for the other one. The Mark 20, however, finally added powers. It also added common logs and the ability to swap the two arguments, X and Y, so you could change the divide and flip the numerator and denominator. It had some red keys. Why? I don't know, but they were red. I guess they look nice. But a lonely, look up at the top, a very lonely shift key up there at the top. This time it's a black shift yeah, key, right. but it's stuck up there all by itself for some reason. It's not a shift key, it's a function key. Uh, a function Mark key. Well, an it's, it's an F. Maybe it's the F key. All right. It's late. I'm trying to make everybody laugh. Come on. Um, this one, however, did have a dot matrix display. That was really interesting. Lots of little dots. Sorry for the dirt, but I was in a hurry. Uh, very strange. Very strange. This is a Mark 68R. It was rechargeable. A different industrial design. Same feature set, just a different design. So. You've got keys up here at the top for some of the common stuff, but look, some of the shifted locations are empty. Why make a new key? Why not just stick them down there in the empty shift spot? I mean, we could all have had secure jobs helping companies <laughs> avoid things like that. Imagine if one of us had worked at TI saying, don't have a single program space. Or whatever. Okay. But uh, just a different design. Jim, Finally, go back to that. Is it key next to the F key? Is that arc? Is it inverse? Inverse for sine. Arc. Well, it's R split. Arcs or arc. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's it is the shift key for sine, cosine, and tangent. Because to do sine, cosine, tangent, arc, you've got to press the F key, right? To get to those F arc sine to do inverse sine. That they split the three-letter word arc into two lines. It is strange, Jake. Somehow that looks that reminds me of an old Radio Shack calculator. I wonder if Radio Shack sold rebadged APS. Radio Shack sold a lot of rebadged stuff. Yeah. I talked to uh, a man that worked here, emailed him, uh, one of the first um, pioneers in technology and has been devoting his life to helping minorities in technology. Uh, he didn't remember much about this other than they were always importing and getting pitched designs from people over in Asia. And it took about three months from when they saw it to when they had things being able to be shipped. Because the development had already happened somewhere else. Here's one to pay attention to. The others have all just been trick kind of things. This is the Mark 55. It's RPN. It's RPN. One of the few. The Corvus 500 is RPN. The Mark 55 is RPN. It has hyperbolics. Now the other R machine was rechargeable. So. The previous machine that we have since not stopped talking about was rechargeable. Yeah, so RPM rechargeable, but it's Mark 
I'm right. messing with you, Richard. This only has about half RPM, though, because it doesn't have enter, it has int. It has int. It's, it's found in the woods where the ants live. <laughs> All right, never mind. Uh, it did have, I'm messing with Richard up here. Uh, hyperbolics, it had mean, standard deviation, and factorial. Those are functions weren't on the previous models of any sort. Uh, it had four metric conversions. Ooh. To make Sylvain feel comfortable when he's south of the border. Uh, nine memories, it had a 12 digit display. Polar rectangular conversion, a four level stack, X, Y, Z, and W. <laughs> Get the W. It had W level replication for drop. It had a last X and X and Y. A nice model, horrible, no feedback, springy sounding keys. Terrible. The one you've got here, the Mark 50, has the same kind of keys that's being passed around. The one that's in black, same kind of squishy key. What year is that? This is 77, 78. Lots of ads show the Mark 50. Forget that uh, HP 45. This is the bomb. It's kind of an ad. So there's your keys. Look at what's on there. Forget the uh, off-color tangent oh, key. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, why is the shift key red? I don't understand. Why is the shift key red? But you can see hyperbolic is a shift. I guess DPS, I think, is decimal position or something. I think that's the tell how many digits to show with a decimal. Inverse, you have to do shift, inverse, log to get 10 to the X. I mean, all that kind of fun stuff, right? Uh, mean and standard deviation were computed together, X and S over the sigma plus key. Uh, I mean, you know, the down arrow is roll down. Um, you got last X over here. I don't know why it's in reverse video, so to speak. But anyway, it, it has radians. Are there degrees? I'm not seeing. I think inverse radians puts it into degrees mode. Which is it in now? Can't tell. Very common, apparently. What's inverse five? Uh, maybe it's e. Uh, e to the i pi equals negative one or whatever. Isn't that right? Uh, no. Uh, there's the display showing the 12 digits. There weren't many machines in that time frame that had 12-digit LED displays. That, that's, a, that's a unique thing. Moving up a little bit, better industrial design. This is the Mark 56. It's very similar industrial design with the other one that's being passed around. That's the Mark 90, which was the programmable bigger brother of this guy. Uh, it had trig and hyperbolics. Permutations, added a few more stats. Permutations, combinations, regression. Uh, it had uh, <coughs> spherical and cylindrical conversions. I think that's what C to S is, and S to C. I'm missing the little arrow. Degrees, radians, and degrees, minutes, seconds, and decimal degrees and stuff. It looks really nice. It's got a very nice looking ID to it. Uh, well, whoever made this thing had spent some time in it. Look at the APF Mark 90 that's being passed around. I think you should agree it's a very well-made, nice-looking machine. The bigger brother of that is the Mark 90. It was sold under the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's a European uh, make. It sold some TI models under that brand name. Uh, here, I should, something. Anybody tell me how to say that? Oh, uh, but that's the version that was a European version of it. Uh, it used the NOVUS, the National Semiconductor Programming Approach. It never showed you what it was recording. I hope you pressed all the keys. You press them, it saves them without showing them to you, and then you switch out into run mode and run it. The invisible program. Very strange. There are some models that did that. Uh, this is the APF version. Again, look at the keys in the design. There's still no feedback on the keys, but it is a, a very pretty uh, design to it. Here's the top row of keys. So the top row up here is your programming keys. You would put it over into, it's another red dot version. Uh, put it over into load, press whatever you needed to make it run, go back to run and execute the program. You can see the trig, the hyperbolics, the logs. This time though, uh, the inverse of the logs is actually on the keys. You've got a roots key, you've got factorial, you've got your uh, sub statistics. You enter your pairs of numbers with that X comma Y up arrow. That's how you enter your pairs of numbers. I do see run and skip, but I don't see jump. <laughs> skip, you had to skip a number of steps ahead. 
How hard would that be to know how many steps ahead to go when you haven't even told? I mean, you have to have it all written down, computed the skip steps to skip ahead. Here's the bottom half of it with fraction and integer and some more statistics. The memory keys over there have memory times and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it, it was a pretty advanced little model for the time, but I'm more focused on the the aesthetics. Is that from the ninth circle of hell where you've got the learn on the one side and the previous slide? And then to get to, to run, you have to slide it through clear? I did notice that. <laughs> how, how could you know if it cleared it? You can't see what's in there anyway. Yeah, I, I don't have an explanation for that. I have not tried to key in a program, but that is rather humorous. Sorry, you erased your program. No! Uh, moving on, uh, again, because, hey, it's late. It's late for all of us. Here's an LCD. It's an early LCD. You can tell by the yellow LCD screen. Uh, this is the Mark 8601. Where did that number come from? The 8601, it's similar, uh, according to Bob, I think so, to this uh, Casio, if you just go back and forth. I mean, it, 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 sorry, where am I going? It does look kind of similar in some ways. I mean, eh, maybe made somewhere. It could be a rebadged Casio of some sort. When you look at the keys here, these are smaller keys. Uh, they do have the Casio-ish look to them, but uh, that one at least still works. And there's your LCD display. This one does say when it's in degrees mode. It was in many ads. Most of the ads were Sears. That's where I remember seeing these. This one had a model I had never seen that could be a fake drawing for $59.99 for a rechargeable scientific calculator. That was in March of 75. That's off of the ads that are on your thumb drive in the ad folder. Remember the... Oh, that was 79. 75 there. This is uh, September of 75, J.C. Penney is the one on the left. Uh, J.C. Penney ad for $29.99 for a scientific. And then you've got an algebraic logic scientific calculator for $54.99 there. Sears, back to school, get that Mark 55 for $49.99. Here's another Sears ad. They had a very similar ID. Up at the top, they would have this kind of uh, scrape <coughs> columns into the black plastic. Why? I don't know. But they all had that. I mean, look, here's two more. They had the same thing. The Unitrex seems to be made by the same original manufacturer. The lines on it, though, go horizontal, but the industrial design is so similar as to be suspicious. I think they probably were the same. Uh, but I always like to go back and look at ads to see what it looked like in the day. Now, here's the other thing that was talked about is the Mark, let me put this up, uh, another one, this is like the Mark 68R, the bigger brother of the other one I had shown. Um, they often advertise the Mark 55 being greater than the 45. Let's just go through some of these. There's a catalog picture showing the Mark 90, the Mark 56, and that 68R, 75, 60, and then that's 26, 85. That is not $7. But here's the ad I was talking about. New programmable you should consider. And look, it compares it to the 56, the 25, and the 51.2. Um, I would never want that compared to a 25. I wouldn't want that compared to a 56. At least you can see what the keystrokes are. Uh, here's how it was. The Mark 55 is the most important scientific calculator since the HP 45. You know the HP 45 is a lot of calculator for 195. <laughs> But now, read why the Mark 55 is a lot more for only 79. It did use the Mostec chipset in there to do all the calculations. So it was really sold at trying to be at HP's expense it was a, with a long list of functions. Remember these ads where it would say what yes function is on this and no for somebody else? Through careful choices of what you put up here, you made it look like the other machine couldn't even have three entered on it. <laughs> um, but I mean, no, and I mean, all, I mean, anyway. Humor, humor, humor. Which to own if you just feel compelled tonight to stay awake until you can buy one of these on eBay? Don't be, don't be this way. But if you feel that way, which one would you get? You know you want them all, but what would you choose? The Mark 55 would be the one to say, I've got one. It's RPN. If, you're going, if you were going to be compelled to buy one, get the RPN one. The Holy Grail, right? The Mark 90 is the only really other second choice. That's the one that's going around. The rest of them, if, you've, if one's thrown in a, in a batch, take it, but don't seek it out. There's just no need to. What would, what would those two cost? 
The Mark 55 will be more. It could be anywhere from 60 to 100 bucks. It all depends. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's a horrible machine from the key perspective. But it's RPN, and it's, it is cool to have a 12-digit display. If anybody finds another 12-digit display that's red LED, I want to know about it, because that's, that's an amazing feature for it. So summary, so primarily through Sears, imported from Asia. Consistent, but interesting industrial design to me. Inexpensive, good scientific function selection. Horrible, no-click keys with an obvious springing noise to them. Hmm. Choose from the Mark 55 or the Mark 90 if you had to get one. And how do I end my presentations? Back to your regularly scheduled RPN program. Any questions on APF? We have a few minutes to go back to the TI-88 schematic. And that's it for me. A question? Somebody got a question? No? All right.